what business model can I choose in order to earn like three million dollars a month? Not for the camera. Affiliate marketing has not been hit as hard by the pandemic. Specifically, we've seen a lot of activity cross border. Consumers are a lot more price conscious. Yeah. We more than doubled in the course of a year. Great work, everybody. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Hey guys, welcome to Admitat Academy. Today we are going to have an interview with the United States country manager, Evan Johnson. And today we are going to discuss the results of this year and the plans for the 2021. Hi Evan, welcome to Admitat Academy. Hey Katya, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on. And thank you for coming. So my first question is, how are you? How do you feel after this year? I'm doing well. Um, and not just me, but our team is doing well. I know that this has been a, a challenging year for many, and I don't want to downplay that at all, but we have not only pulled through, but we've done uh, very well for ourselves. Um, so at the beginning of the year, for example, we had five on our team, and mm -hmm. now we've grown to 11. And so we've been very busy this, this year. I mean, everybody has had to really adapt to the pandemic yeah. and adapt to the uh, the new situations that have arisen. And I feel that we've done a particularly good job in, for example, uh, working together well, even remotely, um, starting new initiatives, mm -hmm. whether that be with different clients or different partners. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, but you live some, you learn some. Uh, and I've been particularly proud with how well we've uh, built up working processes mm -hmm. and organizational and analytical methods in our team to help us make our work more efficient and scalable. Okay, thanks. Let's talk a little bit about your experience in Admitad. How long have you been working here? Sure. So I've been with Admitad for about four years. I started here as a salesperson in the advertiser department. So I started uh, speaking with United States and European advertisers to bring them to our network. And uh, over the years, I uh, kind of built up that division, uh, worked with a couple of people in the sales department specifically to work on the international side of things. Uh, after some success there, then I also added publishers to my kind of uh, deck of cards. And after doing uh, publisher and advertiser business development, I last year became the uh, country manager for United States here. Congratulations! Thanks. It's 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 been a it's been a good ride here, and I'm I'm very happy with uh, with. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. That's the most important. So, what do you like the most about Admitat? Are there any specific things that you're proud of? There's a lot of things I like about Admitat. So uh, the number one thing about any company is the people. Uh, people like people like to speak about company culture, right? What is company culture? Kind of what are the rules? But the most important ingredient in that is the people, mm -hmm. because after all, you come to work, or maybe you log on to Zoom, and uh, you're speaking with people for eight hours. So if you don't like them, it's going to be a drag. But I'm I'm very happy with all the people I work with. So starting with uh, my team, I'm very very proud of their professionalism, their attention to detail. Um, they they have uh, initiatives that I, uh, I'm i honestly surprised by that they take, surprised in a good way. Um, my peers, I'm very happy to work with because mm -hmm. I know that uh, I am actually the most recent country manager. So for me, it was a learning experience this past year. And I was very helpful to, ha I was very thankful that my peers were very helpful. I could come to them with any kind of formal or even mm -hmm. informal questions. And uh, working with the leadership has been a pleasure as well. I like the way that in Admitad you can bring an initiative to the leadership and they will allow you to explore it. Um, and not just explore it, but give you uh, kind of the resources and the connections of how to do it. It's very much a, um, a company of ownership mm -hmm. and that if you develop an idea, you can really own it and take pride in it and uh, kind of take responsibility for it. That's really important for your development. Yes, yes, yes. And not just my development, but the development of, of a company. The company. Yeah. It means that uh, new initiatives, new ideas that come from the lower ranks actually can uh, have life breathed into them instead of having a leadership which just kind of says, you know, this is how we're going to do it just because I say so. And I'm very happy to say that we don't have that here. That's awesome. Sounds like a perfect job. 
Well, you heard it here. <laughs> yeah, and Admirat is 10 years old now. Can you share any funny story, anything you remember that was a little bit probably awkward, just some funny story? Not for the camera. <laughs> okay, let's not reveal our secrets. Okay, let's get down to the business. And how do you feel at the end of the year? You said that you had many good points, so you had developed lots of stuff. And what about all advertisers? And are there any specific categories of companies that have benefited from this virus, from this crisis? Sure, sure. So. Um First of all, I don't want to say that any specific company has real, has uh, benefited from the crisis. I can say that some companies have done uh, better, some companies have mm -hmm. done a bit worse, I but I don't want to say that any company has really been of taking of advantage of a bad situation. Bad. So um, I would say that we've noticed in particular that our online services have done very well. And this is both uh, B2B services such as uh, hostings, or web design services that have helped uh, entrepreneurs as, uh, for example, people have been sitting at home, maybe they want to diversify their income, maybe they wanted to try a new career track. Mm -hmm. uh, also in the B2C segment, so for example, a lot of online education, online uh, entertainment, whether that be streaming or uh, various kinds of books, uh, has been very popular as well. Um, in t another kind of successful advertiser we've seen is the fast fashion segment. Um, because we've seen them kind of take more market share from the, uh, the larger fashion brands. And we think that's because the consumer in the time of uh, lowered income has become more price conscious. And therefore, uh, fast fashion kind of fills in that space where somebody, for example, wants to feel good about themselves, wants to make a purchase, mm -hmm. but maybe can't afford uh, $200 on a shirt anymore. And what about affiliate marketing? Has it changed somehow during this year? So uh, this year has seen a lot of continuation of trends we've seen previously in affiliate marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's been a lot of uh, consolidation in of networks. Uh, global networks have been uh, acquiring more local networks. And so there's they're bringing that kind of standardization and that umbrella. Uh, we're also seeing that there's a continuation of the trends of transparency and uh, advertisers really wanted to know exactly where their ad is being placed. And of course they should know that. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide that full transparency, by the way. Um, we've also seen that a lot of uh, smaller players have been finding solutions uh, that have been suited more to their needs. So for example, maybe you don't want to work with a, on the traditional network model, maybe you want to make your own affiliate program at first before you mm -hmm. go uh, access a network. And so there's been a lot of um, SaaS platforms which have risen to fill those needs. Uh, in general, affiliate marketing when compared to other uh, types of marketing has not been hit as hard by the pandemic because uh, for example, a lot of print advertising, a lot of radio advertising, television advertising, that's more uh, high level on the marketing funnel. It's harder to directly measure its impact. And uh, you know, there's Wan Wanneker's dilemma where he says, half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The problem is I just don't know which half. Yeah, I heard this. And so uh, we can say that in affiliate marketing, that doesn't really apply mm -hmm. because of just how our technology works is that we're able to track exactly if you're an advertiser, you spend $100 in the affiliate channel, you receive $150 to $200. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very direct correlation. And it, it also helps that a lot of our affiliates, uh, for example, more of the cashbacks and promo codes and mm -hmm. kind of um, discount publishers, they sit a bit lower on the marketing funnel. So therefore, um, advertisers, uh, when they spend on that, they know that they're getting a lot closer to that purchase of the end consumer. So, um, in general, uh, I'd say affiliate marketing is doing well. That's perfect. And you said something about cashback and coupons. Are they popular right now? I guess people start using them more and more right now. Right, right. So we we saw a lot of growth, uh, mm -hmm. especially in the coupon segment. Um, that is because uh, more players are trying to get into the field. Uh, specifically, we've seen a lot of activity cross-border. Uh, 
So, for example, uh, a coupon site that maybe was very active in the European markets,、mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple of examples of how they've spent, they've used 2020 to enter the American market. Uh, and this has worked particularly well for coupon sites because, as I mentioned before, in a time of limited income,、uh, consumers are a lot more price conscious. So having that coupon can really help them,、uh, can really help push them over the edge and make that sale. What about the advertisers? Did they provide more coupons this year or the same amount? Uh, we've seen that, especially for the holidays, they've picked up their、uh, amount of kind of offerings.、Mm -hmm. I know that、uh, free shipping is one that's becoming a lot more popular now.、Uh, but I mean, you don't have to be a genius to understand that e commerce in general has done very, very well this year. So、uh, they've, they've taken advantage of that with all the tools that they could, including coupons. Okay,、uh, and what about other publishers? You said about the coupon sites. What about any other business models? Did you see any cool case studies that some publisher developed his or her business model and it was really successful? Well, we've seen a lot of more smaller publishers, for example,、um, Content sites that are using our tool MoneyLink, which allows、uh, easy, easy monetization of links that exist on a website.、Uh, we've also seen a lot more drop shipping,、okay. um, that there's been a lot more,、um, a lot more affiliates making sites on site builders, such as on shop builders, I'm、mm -hmm. sorry, such as Shopify, and then connecting them to、uh, a large supplier in. We'll say, for example, like China, like、uh, Alibaba, AliExpress. And that, that way they can、uh, run the store, but they don't have to keep any inventory. Yes, and that's, that's been、perfect. a very popular method that we've,、mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of growth with, especially in the United States over this past year. Sounds great. And what do you think about the influence marketing? Is it growing or is it on the same level? So、uh, I would say influencer marketing is still growing.、Uh, it's not. Well, so over the past couple of years, it's been a very、uh, buzzword heavy thing、uh, where, for example, you've seen influencers say that I have X amount of followers, give me tons and tons of money. And so now、uh, brands aren't just throwing money willy nilly at the, at the influencers, but they're understanding that, of course, influencers have、uh, reach and audience, but they're being more、uh, scientific in their approach to influencers. Okay, now let's talk about Admetad. And were there any significant changes or events that took place this year? So, we started working remotely.、Yeah. Um, that's, I mean, I, I'm sure we're not the only company that's done that, but that was a, that was a big thing for us.、Um, it, it went well. I'm very happy to say that.、Uh, at first, I'll be honest, I wasn't super sure how well that would work out because,、uh, again, a big part of、uh, why I like working here is the people. And so, if I wasn't seeing the people all the time,、um, I wasn't sure how that was going to work, but I'm very happy to say that it worked well.、Uh, structurally, this was the, at least my first year,、uh, in which we had been working split by countries.、Mm -hmm. uh, previously, we'd been split into like advertisers and publishers, and now we, each country has、uh, a more close knit team of advertising managers, sales,、uh, publishers,、uh, marketing, and so on. Do you think it's a good way? Do you like it? I do, I do, because it allows for,、uh, for example, advertisers and publishers, sometimes they didn't always work together、uh, as well as they could have in the past because there were kind of these internal divisions between them, but now there's a much more freer flow of information.、Um, and, and that feedback loop allows for quicker developments and allows for just more new ideas to rise up. So I'd say, yes, that was, that was a big positive. Um, we had also been working this year to develop a lot more of our、uh, Admetad monetized technology.、Mm -hmm. So,、um, last year we had acquired、uh, a company called AdGoal and we incorporated a lot of its technology into our network and kind of our offerings that allow publishers different ways to monetize their traffic.、Uh, and that, that had been going well.、Mm -hmm. um, I'd say those were the biggest changes that have happened.、Uh, I guess, oh, in a, in a positive change,、uh, something that I'm really happy with, that at least our team did,、uh, we doubled revenue compared、That's、to last year.、Awesome. Uh, looking at month over month and annually. So we're, we're doing really well.、Uh, and I'm very proud of my team for doing that. Great, great work, everybody.、Um, and so, yeah, I, I really got to give them credit where credit's due. I'm really happy to hear that. What about,、uh, what do you feel about the working remotely? Do you like it? 
it has advantages and disadvantages. Um, so I like that it gives people flexibility of schedule. Mm -hmm. I like that it gives me flexibility of schedule, uh, especially because sometimes I'll have calls with partners in California. And uh, if I'm sitting in, for example, Moscow, then that's an 11 hour time difference. And I don't want to be stuck in an office all the time. Um, I like that it gives me flexibility to go to the gym when I want. That's a big thing for me, uh, but that's just speaking uh, me as Evan Johnson, not me mm -hmm. as the, the country manager. Um, it has been beneficial to our team as well. So for example, one of our publisher managers, or I'm sorry, our publisher business development, um, she has actually been in New York since August. And so she has been seeing a, a lot quicker responses, a lot better communication mm -hmm. with publishers, and she's able to be kind of on their local time. And so that is that, that has uh, been very good. So it, obviously she couldn't do that if she was sitting in the office with us. And so we're very happy with that. Um, it, one thing that has been important with, with working remotely, because obviously the biggest drawback is that you're not as connected. You don't always have that, that kind of serendipitous mm -hmm. exchange of information. So uh, I've been sure to have uh, weekly one-on-one -on -one calls with everybody, and we have a weekly team call as well. So making sure to set those times where everybody's kind of gather and check base and just, you know, uh, shoot the breeze. Uh, it really helps working remotely. And did your team face any difficulties? I'm not talking about, about working remotely, but just in general, this year it was pretty hard for business. And were there any different difficulties? We previously had a lot of revenue coming from the travel sector, mm -hmm. and that was uh, well gone due yeah. to uh, certain circumstances. So that was pretty difficult. Um, I wouldn't say that we've, well, I'll say that the, the, uh, the other difficulties we have were kind of growing pains. Like I said, we, we more than doubled in the course of a year. And so uh, there were some issues when, for example, examining old processes, like looking at how things had been done in the past uh, and seeing like, well, how can we do this better? How can we make this more scalable? How can we make this uh, more data-driven, more efficient? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, there were some growing pains in kind of um, moving out of the old ways of doing things and moving into the new ways of doing things. Uh, for example, there were some transfers of clients that were a bit rough for, for a period, but uh, I'm happy to say that now, now that we've done that, we've become a lot more better. We like uh, managers can focus a lot more on their work and get a lot more accomplished. So, uh, you know, there's a saying, you have to break a few eggs to make an omelet. And so, uh, we have a very good omelet right now. Oh, that sounds <laughs> awesome. Just awesome. And what do you expect from the new year? Are there any plans for the next year? Uh, we have a lot, lot in store. Uh, I can't really say right now on camera, but uh, stay tuned and you'll, you'll see a lot. Uh, you'll see a lot of good things heading your way from Advertad US. But what do you think about the industry of affiliate marketing? Will it change somehow? Are you expected any like significant changes in the in, in the industry? Well, I do expect that uh, remote working will become more and more popular. Uh, in in terms of uh, some companies had done it before, and now uh, almost all companies had done it this year. So I expect that trend to continue. Um, I. Don't I expect the trends that I had mentioned earlier? Uh, for example, consolidation, uh, more transparency, and then smaller players uh, finding uh, more niche services to fit their needs. I expect all those trends to continue. Mm -hmm. um, I don't expect any particular earthquakes. Um, well, I would say that um, with the trend of more privacy mm -hmm. and more data protection and government regulation, um, I especially with the with a lot of people paying more attention to how their browsers track them. Uh, I assume that networks that have uh, tracking solutions that can fit into this regulations will mm -hmm. do a lot better than networks that don't. And at this point, like networks aren't stupid, they're adapting to this, yeah. but it is definitely a major point to consider. Uh, publishers should also be concerned with that as well as, I mean, everybody in digital marketing has to be aware of these changes and make adaptations to um, make sure that they ensure their revenue. Regarding the tracking solutions, uh, there is a new tool, Teleport, in mm -hmm. Admitad. Can you tell anything else about it? Sure, sure. So, uh, Admitad Teleport is our new tracking solution. 
which uh, essentially means that you no longer have an affiliate redirect that goes to our servers. Instead, the uh, user is directed directly to the merchant and the tracking of the purchase is done in parallel. Uh, for now, it's only available to pu publishers working on an API connection with us. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we've been testing it with a lot of cashback partners, but we expect to expand it to a wider range of partners in the near future. And the main advantage will be that it will, uh, for example, allow us to be a lot more compliant and allow us to track a lot more uh, sales with when these browsers uh, have to, for example, implement stricter uh, pr protocols about, mm -hmm. um, you know, redirects, uh, privacy, and so on. I agree, so we are also adapting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so get ready. Now we are going to have a very difficult question, but it's really popular nowadays. So if I'm a publisher and I want to start working in an affiliate marketing, tell me what business model can I choose in order to earn like three million dollars a month? I'm sure that there are some business models and some of our viewers expect to hear the answer. Right, so everybody wants to hear how to get money easily, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, like, affiliate marketing is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Affiliate marketing is a pretty developed industry at this point, and so you should expect that if you want good results, you should put in uh, a lot of research, a lot of hard work, a good selection of your niche. So. Uh, I would be wary of anybody who claims to know, you know, the top secrets of affiliate marketing, mm -hmm. especially, please, please, if you want to be a publisher, do not spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a course that will teach you all the secrets. Instead, you should come to Admitad Academy and learn how to do it right. Thank you. I must say that this advertisement were, wasn't paid by Admitad Academy. <laughs> Okay, now let's be serious. Can you share any tips with our publishers who just begin their way? Sure, sure. So if you want to begin to do affiliate marketing, I really recommend that you do your research at first. So know the terminology, know uh, who are all the different players, know how they interact, know how um, each of their concerns or challenges affects the others, because it is, uh, it's not the simplest ecosystem to understand. So you should make sure to understand exactly how everybody interacts. And then once you do that, you should make sure to understand what are you interested in? What is the niche that you want to pursue? Uh, a lot of affiliates start out pretty well by selecting a particular niche. Uh, maybe they are really good woodworkers mm -hmm. and they want to um, write a very specific blog about the ins and outs of woodworking and work with, for example, home improvement advertisers. And by doing this, you'll be able to, uh, one, present a unique perspective and two, uh, maintain authenticity, authenticity so that you can uh, connect with your audience a lot better. Of course, the third element is just hard work. Uh, being consistent, uh, if you're a content affiliate, always putting out content, um, making sure that all your codes are up to date, that all your links are up to date, that you're following the news. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like any other job, really. I definitely agree. Okay, thank you for your tips and thank you for coming to our interview. I wish you all the best and much more profit next year to your team. I hope this year will be awesome and will be a little bit easier and more profitable and happy upcom upcoming holidays. Great, thank you very much, Katya. Happy holidays to you as well. Thank you. Guys, thank you for watching our video. I wish you happy holidays as well. Bye-bye. If you have any questions, of course, you can ask them in the comments. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.